Hello and welcome back to Linux Jabba, where we prepare you for Linux jobs. My own name is Sean May Joseph, and I will be walking you through physical storages today. If you have any questions, please give me a call and uh, or email me at showpopulous at gmail.com or go to linuxjabba.com and send an email and we'll respond to your questions. In previous videos, we talked about boot up process. Your computer goes when you push the button to turn on your computer, it goes through a bunch of discoveries before it finally loads the operating system. So one of the things it does towards the end of the boot up process is that it identifies your drives, your devices on your computer. And once it finds one with an operating system, maybe Linux, it will um, eventually get that operating system loaded into memory. In this video, we will be talking about when that operating system gets loaded into memory and what happens at that point. In previous videos, we talked about the boot process and we'll be talking about the details of this in another video. In another video. But for today, let's just worry about what happens when the operating system gets loaded into memory. Once the operating system gets loaded into memory, your the operating system does many things. One of the important things it does is that it identifies your hard drives. So imagine this was the operating system gets loaded into memory of this computer here. Now it starts to look for the hard drives, even though it already knows that you have a hard drive or that you might have a hard drive. It, it needs to look for the, the, the hard drives. So then it finds a hard drive, right? Or in some cases, it finds two hard drives. So this is on a laptop. If you have the desktop, if you were doing this on a desktop, it does find. If you have one, it will find that one hard drive. If you have multiple hard drives, it will find them. And when it finds your hard drives, one of the imp very important things the operating system will do is to label the hard drives, hard drives, meaning that it will give them names. So say, for instance, the first one it finds, it gives it dev SDA. That's the name it will call this hard drive. It doesn't always have to be SDA. It could be HDA. Um, in my head, I try to call it um, SATA disk A, SATA disk B, SATA disk C, SATA disk D, and so on and so forth. Or in some cases, in the olden days, they will call it HDA, which will mean hard drive A, hard drive B, Hard drive C, so this will be A, B, C, D, E. So the operating system will give them names. That's one of the um, one of the very important things that the operating system does when it um, when it turns on when you turn on the computer and it gets loaded into memory. But once it's done doing that, you have to realize that this hard drive is useless to you, it's useless to me, it's useless to the computer. More or less, if you want to think about it, you can think about it as pretty much a this is the basement of, an, of a house. So your your hard drive is pretty much an unfinished basement. It's useless. Nobody lives in a place like this. It has to turn from this point to something like this or finished something like this where you have doors and you have the bathroom, you have a kitchen, you have a living room, and you have all kinds of things. When your space looks like this, it's useless. Think about it. Nobody uses a space like this. So your hard drive in this case is useless until it gets partitioned. So now let's go over it again. Your operating system, Linux, gets loaded into the memory of these machines, then the machines discovers this operating system these hard drives again when the operating system discovers the hard drives then the hard drives have to be partitioned for it to be usable it's not usable as it is when you put it in it's not usable like this in this form until it is partitioned so what does it mean to partition what it means to partition is to take it and is to take your operating is to, is to take your space and make it useful, meaning that take all this empty space, create rooms in them. Nobody 
uses a useless empty space like this. What we do is that we make usable spaces out of them, like create a bathroom or create a kitchen or create a toilet or create a living room or whatever else we want to create. So let's talk about how to do the partition. But before we talk about how to do the partition, let's look at about how Linux labels the hard drives. So the first one it finds it called SDA. The second one it finds we call SDB or HDA and HDB. Either way, when that happens, what it does is that let's take a look at this example here. We take this H Linux call this hard drive a dev HDA. So imagine that this is the hard drive that you put into your machine. So when you put in this hard drive, this single hard drive, let's call this our H HDA. This is a single hard drive. Let's call it HDA. Linux gives it a name, dev HDA. I'll go over it again. This is the hard drive. This is what Linux calls it, dev HDA. Inside it, we now have to create partition, HDA1, HDA2. Think of this as this is the bathroom, this is the kitchen. The entire space is the basement. Linux calls it HDA. Inside of that entire space, we need to divide it to useful space. The first part, we call it HDA1. That's the partition. This is a device. The partition HDA1 is the bathroom. The second one, HDA2, is our living room or whatever other space you want to call it. Now, that is partitioning. What, the, what tool do you use for partitioning? FDisk. You can use FDisk. You can use uh, Parted, uh, P-A-R-T-E-D, to partition. Now, something that um, you need to keep in mind is that there are different types of partitions. So when you partition like this, this could be a primary partition or an extended partition. Now let's look, take a look at it. So this is the device, DevHDA. Inside that device, DevHDA, there are different partitions. Partition 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. Notice that partition 1, 2, and 3, 1 and 2 are primary. Then the third one is extended partition. Why is that the case? How did that happen? That's because in a device, the way the manufacturers make these devices, you can only have a maximum of four partitions, no more. Partition one, pr pr primary partition one, primary partition two, primary partition three, primary partition four. If you want more than four primary partitions, then you have to make one of your partitions, extended partition. Inside that extended partition, you can then create more partitions. I'll go over it again. You can only have a, pro a maximum of four primary partitions. If you want more than four, you have to change one of your primary partitions to an extended partition so that you can build more partitions inside of it. Now we have talked about devices. We have talked about partitions. We have talked about talked about what is partitioning, how to partition, how to partition is F disk, and then we talked about types of partitions. And once we are done talking about types of partitions, we talk about uses of partitions. So once you are done doing the partition, what next? What do you do? Now let's talk about what next. Inside those partitions now is where you create file systems. Linux puts the file systems here. This is the structure of Linux partitions. So let's say Linux creates dev HDA is the device. This is the one disk that we put in inside our, inside our machine. One disk inside our machine. Linux calls this one, one disk dev HDA. Inside dev HDA, we build two partitions. HDA1 and HDA2. HDA1 would generally be called your boot partition. So if you do an F disk, 
space dash L on your machine right now, you probably see a partition with a star or an asterisk on top of it. And that will be your boot partition. Then the second one will prob probably be where your Linux operating uh, is will probably be where your file system um, is is loaded. So so let's say this is the the HDA2. Remember now, this is HDA2. This all all of this everything here is HDA2. HDA1 is not here. HDA1 is the boot partition. This is the HDA2 in our example. I'll go over it again. So now we have one drive. Inside this one drive, which is this is the drive. It's called a device. This is the device, the drive. We have two partitions, HDA1, HDA2. HDA1 is our boot, boot partition. HDA2 holds our file system. This is our file system. So this is what Linux, this is how Linux structures its file system. This thing here is called the root partition, root directory. So this thing fills up all of HDA2. Inside here now, Linux build what you call the file system. So this is the root of the file system, meaning the head of a tree. This, uh, the, this is the stem of the tree. This is the bottom of the tree. These are branches of the tree. So I'll go over quickly what these things are used for. I won't do it in detail because that's not the purpose of this tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is for physical, is to explain physical storages, which, which I have just explained. So in here, bin for binaries, binaries, home where you keep your users, Etsy where you keep configuration files. So those are the important things here. But this is the root. And inside the roots is where all of this lives. These are file systems. If you have any questions about this, please give me, send me an email at showpopulous at gmail.com and I'll be sure to answer your questions. I'm here today discussing physical storages. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.